The uh, videotape you're watching was shot not at a CD strip joint in a big city. This is what goes on every night inside what used to be a family restaurant in a small Texas town. And for almost a year, the residents have been fighting to get this place closed. They want to close also a nude tanning parlor and a nude car wash. In big cities and small towns all over America, businesses are finding out when times are hard, boy, we can make a lot more money when our female workers take off their clothes. And if you think this couldn't happen where you live, listen to this. In a small town not far from here, a hair salon for men is opened on a main street. This is a street where the families are shopping and the children are walking by because they're going to school. But take a look at what the employees look like when they're working. This is Dawn, who is the owner of Scissors and Lace, and uh, two of her employees, Valerie and Dallas. Dawn, explain what kind of business you're running. Why do you think it's necessary for the workers to dress like this? Well, it's actually not necessary. This is what they enjoy. And this is where men are gonna wanna come to get their hair cut. Why go to a normal barber shop when you can come for $15 and see lovely ladies in lingerie? How well do they cut hair? Very well. Do they? Absolutely. <laughs> got two guys right here that just got their hair cut. Stand up, guys, and turn Stand around. <laughs> Let's take a look at you. Yeah. Uh, where did you learn to cut hair? I went to Wilford myself. Wilford Academy. Yeah. All right. Wilford. And go. where did you, you learn to cut hair? I, uh, I went to vocational. Vocational school? Vocational also. So you're, you have a license to cut right. hair? Okay. Dallas and Valerie, how do you feel about working dressed like this? It really doesn't bother me. Actually, I'm wearing more than what they wear on the beach. Hello. Okay. So. <laughs> it's like I'm at the beach, you know. Well, as I said, not everyone is happy about this. Let me introduce Dallas's boyfriend, Jerry. Jerry, raise your hand. Oh, yeah. And this is Valerie's cousin, Ronnie. Jerry, how do you feel about your girlfriend going to work wearing uh, lingerie or a bathing suit or whatever? Not much to it. <laughs> not much. You know, how would you like to go out? All the guys hitting on your girlfriend. Not too good. So have you talked to her about it? Oh, yes. What does she say? Mm. Who pays the rent? <laughs> how you Whoa. gonna make money? <laughs> Valerie, do you feel you could work in a legitimate uh, I have. beauty salon? You have? Yes. But if the male customers only want to come to you because you're half-dressed, don't you think that it's degrading? No, it's not degrading. Because I, I had a lot of male customers, you know, that, I, that have followed me here. From the other salon? Right. Do they say anything when they see your new attire? <laughs> no. Well, no? wow. <laughs> they get, I get a bigger tip. <laughs> Ronnie, how do you, uh, what about you? How do you think, what do you think about Valerie wearing this to work? I think it's bad for, you know, the family in a way. I mean, what it's, happens? it's our reputation. You Does know? everyone in the family talk about it? Yeah, it, it causes a lot of conflict. It would be like me going to be a mailman and wearing a G-string, you know? Yeah. 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 Around now, Dawn, in all honesty, do you hire women based on how they look wearing a G-string? Basically, um, I, I can't discriminate in this type of business, I'll be honest with you. Um, what looks good to me and what looks good to, to men might be two different things. I don't make a habit of judging women. Um, if they come in and they have all the qualifications, they're a good hairdresser, and um, they feel good in what they're doing, they, you know, as long as they feel confident and they portray that to, to the customers, that's what's important to me. All right. Let me introduce to you Mystic. That's her name. Mystic, come on out. Let me get our microphone on. 
Uh, Mystic, you work in a club. Do you cut hair? No. <laughs> okay. The club where you work has come under a lot of fire because it's within 2,500 feet of a school. Do you think people have a right to be upset? No, not necessarily, because you have to be 21 to get into this club. Right. There's no mirrors, there's no windows where you could walk by the club and see what's going on. I Are mean, there pictures of the girls outside? No. Okay. We there's would... pictures outside, there's spray painted faces outside of the club, but it's just a face. Nothing else? No, you can't see anything. Okay, your cousin, uh, Maria, is with us today. Maria, come on out. Maria, we've heard about one family where he says the whole family sits there and talks about it. You're a cousin to Mystic. What's happening in your family? Okay, well, it's like, um... We can't even go to the store to get like a soda or something without someone asking, did Mystic make it to Playboy yet? <laughs> I mean, this is my brother's uh, friends, they, they're like 18. They're coming to the house, yo, can Mystic autograph this for us? Yeah, I mean, this is... She's become the celebrity of the family and of the town. Yeah, but what type of celebrity? Okay, how do you feel about it? It's upsetting. It is? Yeah. What do you think she ought to do? Data entry, secretary or what? Uh, you know, the list goes on. She's Mystic, not stupid. Have, have you thought about data entry? I used to work for Honda. I right. had a full-time job. And if I could make, you know, they're making two, three hundred dollars a week when I can make five, six hundred dollars a night. Well, what you gonna do when you're 40, though? <laughs> How do you answer that, Maria? I wonder what she's gonna do when she's 40 and she don't have their body. Thank you. Uh -huh. Well, do it now while you can. <laughs> exactly. Why not the body now? Do it now. Live, live. Do it now. But do you really I think? I choose no, to do. No, no, no. Do you really think that you're gonna have a substantial amount of money from what you're doing right now to to actually like have a foundation with a home, a car? I mean, that's gonna last. Actually, it's more possible with her doing it now than it now, would working then, at Honda. And we're having we're fun. fun. It's not all money. It's fun. Are you? I guess uh, Maria, you have a very good point. It's the thing I'd ask. Are you putting so much away that it makes it worthwhile for the... Majority of my money I put away. To you? Everything is saved away in CDs. Right, but how do you... I them all in your closet. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> how do you feel about uh, your cousin Maria? How do you feel about the family? When they criticize you, what do you say? I mean, that's their opinion. That's their views. Okay. You know, this is... A, I'm an adult. This is something I do for me. This is what makes me happy. I enjoy the money. I enjoy... It's, it's, a, it's entertainment. But if it makes everyone else upset, doesn't that bother you? That's their problem, not mine. Yeah, but I mean, if, don't you have respect for them and, and their views, if it bothers and, them? And that goes the same way. Don't they have respect for me and my She's views gonna and what I do? She's going to live her life. She's got to be happy with her life. Well, True. if they start knocking on our doors, you know... Maria, I know you compare mystic stripping to prostitution because when you talked to us, you said that's what it is. It's prostitution. I said it goes together. You think it does go together? Yeah, it's the same thing. All right. How do you feel about that? That's her decision. Okay. You don't mind what other extracurricular activities go with it? Extracurricular activities? <laughs> huh? See, I don't know what she does. That everybody thinks because we're dancers, we're all on cocaine. We right. do it to steal people's boyfriends, to steal people's husbands. We do it. But that's we, their you know, we're prostitutes. Uh, we just dance. The men are not allowed to touch us. They are not allowed to. I have a boyfriend. I don't work at these clubs to take your husband, to take your boyfriend, to how, take your How does your, your boyfriend feel about it? He met me dancing. Oh, he did. Mm -hmm. So that's all right with him. He has no problem with it. Okay, I would think that between the two of you. Now, how does the community, what do we think about the community? How does the community feel about this? I mean, we started by saying that you were within X number of feet of a school. Mm -hmm. What's happening at the club? Because there's been a lot of people who think you shouldn't be that close to a school. Well, the club is all nude. It's an all nude juice bar. Right. 
and we've had a lot of trouble with the cities and the governments and the regulations even opening up the club. It took us 10 months to open. Right. And now that we're open, they're finding any little thing to try and shut us down, and now it's that we're too Does close the to a school. community have a law? It has to be a certain distance from a school? Mm -hmm. And you are not... We started building this club before, before any of these regulations came in, and now that they have the regulations, the club was already built. Yes, what do you think? Okay, my question is to Mystic and Maria. How are you guys cousins? I need to know that first, then I can ask you one question. How are we cousins? Mm -hmm. Our mothers or sisters. Okay, we love you. Okay, moving right along. My question to you is if that place is 1,500, within 1,500 <laughs> feet of a school, would you want your child to go to a school where you have that particular type of business there? I wouldn't worry about it because they're, all they're doing is walking past the building. But it's the it principle of it. It it's doesn't not, it's say not... strip club outside. Okay. It doesn't say nudie bar. It doesn't say anything. But our kids are not stupid. They're quite intelligent. And they're not deaf, dumb, blind, and stupid. They're going to learn. Okay, well, then you should walk your child home from school and make sure he doesn't pass. That's good. I can't hear you. Yes. If they're, intelligent, if they're intelligent enough, you should be able to teach them okay. right from wrong. And you should be able to teach them that this is not wrong. This is just what this, these people choose to do. And that's their desire in life. I understand that, but I see how Maria feels. Yeah. This comment is for Mystic. You have said earlier that your club requires ID. Do you know how many kids I know that are 16 and have fake IDs? And they walk, you no. get a 16 year old going into your club. You can't That's just show water. any photo ID. It they has do, it do it all the time. And they our do club doesn't serve alcohol, it's a juice bar, and you have to show full positive When they ID. call it a juice bar, can you, I have a, a, to me, juice means drugs. What does it mean to you? Oh, a juice In bar. my day, juice meant okay. drugs. No, a juice bar means we don't serve alcohol. It's all cranberry. Ah, you really grapefruit. serve juice. Yeah, it's all juice. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to make a comment about the kids in school. I think we have more problems with kids carrying guns to school you than we do it. with exactly. kids. Then worrying about going to see somebody so, naked. Thank you very much. <laughs> First of all, if you want to do what you do, that's fine. First of all, don't you have respect for your own bodies? We look good. Like, I mean, look at you. Your head, and so what's wrong with it? You, you see less on the beach. And what you wear when you go to the beach? Do you go to the beach? what people wear on the beach. I don't wear what you're wearing. Do you go to the beach, though? But we have the bodies to wear it. Right. That's I have the bodies to wear it. And if you want to have a, um, a beauty parlor, a men's, whatever it don't is. Don't go to it if you don't like it. Believe me, I wouldn't. But no, what, let me tell you, let me just finish. Have an industrial area. Don't have it in is the an area, a residential area. area. It's not in a residential area. Where I walk by with my residence. children and say, oh, okay. mommy, look, they're half okay. naked. Okay. I have are, to explain to them other things. Are you done? We are not. It has nothing to do with this. We're not in a residential area. You keep going on and on. We're not in a residential area. Where are you? When you walk by the street. Road. It's a commercial industry, it's a commercial it, yes, All most right. definitely. We cleared that up. Okay, thank you. We, <laughs> we told you about that steakhouse in Texas that added new dancers to increase business. We're going to meet one of the dancers and her boyfriend. The boyfriend wants her to quit this kind of thing. We're going to also meet a woman who says she earns more money in bikini contests than she could doing anything else. I didn't know that just wearing a bikini you could earn money. Her sister wants her to cover up and do something more productive with her life. Stay with me. Okay, welcome back. Here's the skivvy. The skivvy is, number one, should, I guess they're not girls, they're old enough to be called women. Should women do this in the first place? How do they feel about themselves when they do it and what is with their self-esteem? The second question is, how does the community feel when these places of business are located in public areas near schools or on main streets? And third, how would you feel? If the girl behind the counter at the neighborhood ice cream parlor showed up to work semi-naked, now that may sound a little far-fetched, but all kinds of businesses find that going X-rated these days provides a lot of extra cash. Car washes, X-rated. Barber shops, golf caddies, and 
so-called family restaurants. I told you about a town in Texas where a family steakhouse just decided to add uh, more sauce, became a nude steakhouse known as the East Texas Chicken Ranch. In a minute, we're going to meet a woman who uh, worked there and at the new tanning parlor in the same town. Let me introduce first her boyfriend. Her boyfriend's name is Omar. Hi, Omar. How are you? Fine, thank you. Tell me what you think about Ashley working at these places. You don't mind the places. That's not bothering you. No, because You I... don't mind where they're located. That's not bothering you. No. You don't mind that she does this. That's not degrading to you, and that's not bothering you. No. Then what is bothering you? Well, it's like the painter's house is the only house on the block that doesn't have no paint on it. And you know, the, the, automatic, the automotive mechanic, his is the only car that don't run on the block. Well, my old lady, she models lingerie, so there's a little bit less romance at the house because she does it all day. So when she comes tired. home at night, she's too tired to paint the house or repair the car. <laughs> Got it. Or cook the supper or... Cook the supper or anything else. Yes. Now, you are also a bartender at a topless club. Yes. So why is it OK for you to work there and not your girlfriend to work at wherever it is she works? Well, number one, it's my job to serve alcohol. Right. It's not my job to go out and excite women to So give yours me money. is not being uh, involved with sex That's or sexual it. activities all day. That's true. Can I ask you a question? When you come home, are you tired? Yes. But, and I don't serve drinks at my house. I don't bartend in my house because I am tired. But uh, there's certain parts to a relationship that, you know, when you come home, I'm not too tired to love on my old lady. Okay. Let's meet Ashley, old lady. Come on out. Referred to you. as an old lady. Oh. Loses something, right? Yeah. Yeah. First, tell us what you do do for a living. Do you do you <laughs> dance in a club? Well, I dance and, uh, and uh, go totally nude. Or totally nude. Mm -hmm. So this is a completely nude club. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. He has your boyfriend live in whatever has no problem with that. Well, some problem. Some problem. Yeah. It's in it. When did the problem develop? About a minute well, ago. Well, there's some problem with, with, with their new job in the tanning salons. They, they have private rooms, and it's an all-female staff. And so the security problem, I, you know, she's a small, petite girl. And if okay. uh, one of these big, hairy-legged boys decides to get out, you know, wh what's a little girl going to do? So now we have fatigue and lack of sexual desire as being the main problems. How do you feel about that, Ashley? Well, that's not entirely true because uh, because he doesn't like my job, you know. He's kind of not very nice. <laughs> so. He's not nice to you. Well, because, okay, at the tanning salon, they use towels to sit on and to wash their hands with and the tanning lotions. Well, it's the manager's job to wash these towels. And so she, it's her job to bring them home she gets off at 2. She brings him home. She washes towels till 6 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. Then, if I want to have any kind of romance with her, I must stay up till, till 6, 6 o'clock in, in the morning, morning. <laughs> which ruins my next day, because then I have to sleep all day. And then Hasn't the tanning salon to... heard of a commercial laundry, which would be much more antiseptic to begin with? Yes. Uh... See, her washing machine doesn't get those, that water hot enough to disinfect those towels. Anybody yeah. will tell you that. Yeah, well, they have, they have special disinfectant that they do use. But it's the corporation is not big enough at this time. Uh, we're just starting out with small All right. things. And uh, it has been on paper. So let me understand that. that Leslie is a towel washer by night and a nude dancer by day. Ashley, yes. Ashley, yes. All right, meet yes. Mandy and her sister Ramona. She earns her living by wearing a bikini. 
Mandy, tell us what your sister does. Ramona does bikini contests locally. Now, I, I just said, how do you earn a living wearing a bikini? <laughs> they have contests, like a lot of them during the summer. We live in Orlando, so it's, it's there's a lot of them. And she just goes up on stage, does her thing. She does not say one word. Nobody knows how intelligent she is. Right. She's. It's just looks. They're just looking at her body, and they're giving her money, prizes. That's it. When you enter a bikini contest, you get money? <coughs> you make a living entering bikini contests. Yeah. That's okay. what, well, she also has another job as a waitress, but, I mean, a legitimate waitress job. But you, she quit school to do this. How do you feel about her quitting school to wear a bikini? She's so intelligent. She is so much smarter than that. I thought that, you know, she would never do anything like that. I mean, we were raised better than that, but... She's too smart to wear a bikini? She was... <laughs> it's just... She's just so much... But she's so intelligent. It's not even funny. She's, she's a very smart girl. Okay. And she could just do so much better with herself. Okay, let's ask her what E, e equals MC square means. <laughs> let's hear what Ramona has to say about this. Come on out, Ramona. My sister. Sister. Exactly what just happened. They're screaming, and it's, they're just looking at her body. That's it. Ramona, I still have a little trouble with how you earn a living wearing a bikini. Do they pay everyone who enters the contest? No, no. There's a circuit in Orlando. I'm sure there's, like, in California, most sun and sunshine states. Um, we have a circuit, and girls go around to, like, smaller clubs to like Razzles and Daytona, little clubs like that, and they'll have a bikini contest. And what it is is you just come out like I did. It's basically probably 30 minutes long, and you can win up to maybe $500. And usually there's about three places, and top three girls make some money. And the reason why I do these contests is because, I mean, being five foot three and wanting to model is very hard. So doing bikini contests is a way of exposure for myself. And granted, it started out like doing Wine Tropic or, or Venus or bigger, broader contests that are more like a pageant. And so there's a whole up, And that's why thing. she doesn't really like them, because they're like bars that I'm doing these contests It's in. dangerous. And it's she's very afraid dangerous. that somebody's going to follow me home one day. And, you know, she doesn't sure. like There what was fun. a time I went with her because I was afraid that she was going to I mean, Daytona Beach, spring break, there's so many people drunk 24 hours a day. We were leaving in a truck, in a pickup truck. About 10 guys came and jumped in the back of the truck, banging on the windows, <laughs> yelling Ramona. I mean, what if she was all by herself? I mean, there were 10 guys. She could get hurt. It's, That's what she's trying to say is, I mean, I understand what she's trying to say, but my point is, is that this is what I do. How, how much it. have you cleared the last year doing this? In the last oh. year? Uh-huh. Well, have you been doing it a year? Yeah. I mean... What's the total let's, income? Let's average $300 extra a week in contests. I mean, average over... That's... That's so, are you average. averaging three hundred? I mean, a week? that's if I. I mean, if I went to do more, I could. But basically, I have settled down on the contest because you get caught up in it. I mean, it's like, okay, do I go to work and work eight hours and make forty dollars, or do I go do a contest in an hour, have fun while I'm doing it? Because it is an adrenaline flow. So, are you making three hundred a week, or more? Or more? Do you pay taxes? Hmm. No. Real <laughs> now, my selling. <laughs> I think the IRS ought to leave some of us alone and go after the bikini contest. Oh, boy. I'm Michael Jordan, and being a singer and being in entertainment myself, I'm a little bit more liberal-minded. I have no major moral dilemma with this. However, I had a uh, personal experience with this myself. My ex-girlfriend fantasized about being a nude stripper and actually uh, started doing this, and it ultimately did destroy our relationship. She just became more superficial 
and looked at life more differently. If you can, if women could remain unscathed from this and uh, not become involved in drugs and not become so corrupted, uh, that would be fine. But See, it's most the same women don't type. remain All unscathed from this. All new dancers that's, that's, do not that's, that's do drugs. That's do that's not that's do. That's I, do that's I do not drink right. alcohol. I do not do drugs. I don't go home with these men. Right. I mean, it's yeah. the the typical stereotype of You've a stripper. Of course, course not. Of course not. I'm not stereotyping you because certainly, certainly many women don't get involved in that. Unfortunately, many women suffer from it. Me and my boyfriend have been together for nine months. That's a small minority of the The question is, I think, how can you not change? when this happens to you. And how can you not? I, basically with me and Ashley, how can you not? It's, it's myself, it's not her. She hasn't changed. Her self-esteem is the biggest it's and the highest person. at all. Okay, and yes. And it reduces for myself. Hi. Um, you were speaking about intelligence. Well, it seems like your sister is smart enough to know where the money is. That's right. Okay, Thank she's you. going home with a lot of money in her pocket. I could get a legitimate and job and work and make $500 a week. But she, and she's going to be making a lot more. These women make a lot of money. What happens when she's 30, 40 years old, doesn't have this body anymore, I has a couple women babies? I know 30 or 40 yeah. years old, but she don't, she'll, she'll, down the it'll be too late to go to school. She won't together. go to school. You don't have to go to school to, to have a It doesn't matter how good old job, you are. You have to go to school. It doesn't matter how old you are. As long as you take care of yourself, these women could be dancing until they're in their 60s. Here in the 90s, you can't live now and pay later. I mean, uh -huh. Yes. In the something? 90s, it's, it's, you got a plan. You just can't um, live now and pay later. For Ramona, I don't see anything wrong with what you're doing, but when you can't do it anymore, what are you going to do if you don't exactly. have an education? I understand that, and that's why I've decided to go back to school. Uh -huh. Can you do this and go back to school? I just asked her, can you do this and go back to school? Huh? I'm sorry? Can you do it and go back to school? That's that's where she's so angry because I was going to school and I got that. caught up right. in it because of the money and you know, it all started like going to spring break and that's throughout school, you know, because different schools sure. have different spring breaks and it conflicted with my schedule. But now, I mean, basically I've had my fun and now it's like, because it is fun, I'm sorry. I mean, I, I don't know about stripping because mm -hmm. I haven't done that. And I think that's a lot of the reason why she's so upset because she doesn't want it to lead to other things because she knows that it started oh, just God. trying to get... See, I can't say that it doesn't lead nice to other little things. little pageant bikini contest like Hawaiian Tropic. That's, it's very, you know, legitimate. They're not trashy or anything. Right. And then it's going on to, like, these other clubs get that and these senior. girls come out and, and fishing wire. <laughs> Next, a stripper who says she doesn't care that her whole family is humiliated about what she does. She says the problem is that it's our fault. We are too hung up about sex, and she says, I think all women ought to learn to strip. women who make their living with their bodies and who say they've got nothing to apologize for. However, most people like this do have a family member, a lover, or a neighbor who is really outraged. Yes, sir. Okay, I'd like to say something to y'all. Where's this place located? Which one? <laughs> do you want to get um, your hair cut? I'm strip at the salon. Um, the neighborhood wants some respect. I think y'all should move out of there and give that neighborhood some respect because you got kids over there and they pass by this place. They'll be embarrassed, and then their parents will complain. There's nothing wrong with the naked body. If your mother taught you that the naked body is a horrible thing, that's on you. That's not me. Oh, Adam and Eve were naked. I got my more friend. sense. Adam and Eve were naked, but naked, my friend. Don't you think they deserve some respect, too? Yeah, I respect them, but I will never go in there and get my hair they, done. Exactly. You don't have to go. <laughs> I don't think hair is the problem. Yes. Hello. Go ahead, sir. I have a four-part question for the lady. You just ask one part. How much are the haircuts? Fifteen dollars. What's the biggest tip you ever got? Ten. Ten to twenty. What's the latest? What's the last appointment? The last appointment is eight o'clock at night. And do you make house calls? No, we do not. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I would like to ask those ladies, do any of you have children? Excuse me? Sorry? Do any of you have children? No. Yes, I do. Yes. 
Yes, two have children. Who has children? I have children. Three, three have children. I have four. Four children. <laughs> My question to you is, what are you gonna tell your children when they grow up? Uh, My children when they are ask? teenagers, they already know. Oh, okay. I have four right. daughters. But for those of you, when you do have children, when they ask you what career you have, you what are you gonna tell them? Would you let your daughters do this? No, I'm doing this so they don't have to do it. Oh, please. Uh-huh, okay, yes, sir. I would like to know. I would like to know. I would like to know when your boots fall, will you have an education to fall on? You are talking. Hello? You're talking a little loudly. Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, the show is here. When I'm talking to somebody, I don't want you talking to anyone in the audience, okay? Talk to Gentlemen, how to call. Do any of you have a college education to fall back on? No, but I do. I did go to school for cosmetology, and okay. I have a, a GED. I was married very young, that's why. Okay. No, he was just asking. We want you to meet Tammy. Tammy has been happily married for 12 years. She says she still can't bring herself to tell people what her sister-in-law does for a living. Tammy's sister-in-law, Steffi, is a stripper. Before we bring her out, Tammy, tell me how the family feels about Steffi's job. Oh, uh, we I do not discuss that with my family. A bit Why? Married. Because it's embarrassing. And so I, I don't we don't tell my family. Are friends. you married to her brother? Is yes. that the way you're a sister? -in -law? Yes. Okay. We have two two children and we they don't know and they always want to go out and visit Stephanie, but we can't let them because of what she does for a living. Wouldn't it be better to tell the children honestly what she does for a living than to... Well, maybe when they get older and they can understand, but right, right now they're too young to understand. You know, and they see things like, oh, they think it's funny if they see a new person, you know. Is it, so, is it a big embarrassment for you? You don't talk about it with yeah, the family, but right. is it an embarrassment? My, I have a big family and no, nobody knows about it. No one knows. No. She has a secret profession where no one knows no, what she does. My family doesn't In your know. Family. Right. Your family does not know. My family doesn't know. Let's meet Steffi and find out how she pulls off the secret. Come on out, Steffi. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? Well, that's my point. It's just disgusting. <laughs> she's, uh, she's very pretty and she needs to use her brain more than her body. So all the relatives have agreed that their family members are intelligent. Oh, yes. It isn't a matter of that. Steffi, it's no secret to you that the family does not approve of what you do. What do you say to the family? Well, it's mainly the in-laws that don't approve because my mother was a stripper and uh, I started when I was 15. I put myself through college. Oh. <laughs> um, I bought my first house when I was 23 by myself. And now I believe that um, um, you don't, I believe every woman should know how to strip, so I made a video so women can do it at home. They don't have to do, go out to clubs, but they can do this at home because it's fun. <laughs> okay. Next, the man responsible for bringing the nude steakhouse, nude tanning parlor, and nude car wash to these quiet Texas towns. He's gonna to face off against a woman who has actually dedicated her life to closing down these X-rated businesses. We'll be right back. Meet David Studeth. He felt the wrath of an outra outrage community when he opened the controversial 
East Texas Chicken Ranch, Nude Steakhouse, as well as other X-rated businesses in Longview, Texas. Let me also introduce Marsha Lynn, who went from being an ordinary working single mom to leading citizens in a fight to get X-rated businesses out of residential neighborhoods. She's also the founder and president of The Hall. It's a community <coughs> newspaper here in New York. David, let me start with you. Why'd you take a family restaurant and add the nude dancers? Were you doing that poorly? Actually, the, uh, the Shed Steakhouse was in operation for quite some time. They went out of business, and uh, Andy Anderson and myself, my partner, uh, got the idea through several clubs that are very successful in, in the uh, Dallas area. So you didn't own it, and then business was going down, and no. then you did the other thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, Marsha, it seems like there's been a lot of G-rated businesses going X-rated these days. Right? How do you feel about uh, that? I think it's a real problem. I think that uh, the basic problem is that community activists like me are not really interested in the kind of business, but where they're located. And I think that now... So is your theory they can have the video peep shows, they yeah, can have the I bars, mean, look, they can have everything? Absolutely. Look, this has been around since time began. Okay. We're not the moral police. We just feel that they should be zoned into an area. That's why Mayor Giuliani put a moratorium on the biggest city, the best city in the world. He has said no X-rated businesses for one year so we can find the legislation that makes it proper for them to open. And Steam Heat, I know that somebody's here from that club. Who's here from Steam Heat? I think somebody's here from Steam Heat. They opened up that club knowing that the moratorium was in effect and they went ahead as an we insult to the community and club. opened up and I think we that's started, disgusting. We started okay. building the club before he even started any of that. The people Before Giuliani started anything, the club was already almost the finished. The people in Queens closed down runway 69 two and a half years ago. Okay. Yes, sir. Obviously, you women are very beautiful, and I would not want anything bad to happen to you. But I don't know how, how much we have to stress the dangers involved. I mean, I don't want you to have to learn the hard way. I don't know if you feel any... I agree with you. I think it's dangerous. I don't know if they it's feel any less of a woman if they have to um, the clothe club themselves. And outside the club, we have Honey, security. Honey, none of you feel any danger. We are wrong oh, yeah. in being worried about it's you. Dangerous. You do. You're One does. Now, in a, in a yes. club, in a club yeah. it is very <laughs> secure. Our club... But, I Mystic, yeah, Mystic, yeah, but you say you do this... You have danger anywhere. And like we're washing the towels at 3 in the morning. Now, that's a different club. You say, you and these ladies say you do this to dance, huh? Let me tell you, you something. I dance at parties and at my leisure time. I don't go taking off my clothes. I think I do pretty damn good without having to strip. To do all right? All about respect. Okay. Okay. David, how do you answer Marsha, who is saying, do your business, but don't do it in a zone where it shouldn't be? How do you answer her? Well, to begin with. Uh, First of all, let me ask the audience how many of you agree with Marsha, do the business, but do it somewhere else? Yeah. Feel don't do the business at all. How many feel don't do the business at all? Number? Okay. How many feel do the business do wherever you want, near schools, near anything? Oh. I would say, I couldn't, I don't have a meter, but I would say most people feel that as Marcia does. So how do you answer her? Okay. Uh, first of all, our club. I'll let is you answer when we come back. Go ahead, David. Okay. First of all, we're out in the county. We're off of a highway. Uh, we're not in town in anyone's face. Okay. And the sad part is a businessman comes into town, okay, researches all the laws to make sure that we're in compliance, uh, invests a relatively substantial amount of money. Um, at which point uh, we hire 40, 60 employees, only to run into this little group of uh, protesters who completely wield control over the district attorney's yeah. office, who elect a judge uh, right. who used to frequent our club who for... Who pay uh, their taxes. Okay. Who don't want your kind of business in their neighborhood. Why don't you research then, that? Yeah. What are you I, I took an informal poll of the audience. 13 it's, people think we shouldn't have these businesses at all. 28 people in our particular audience said that uh, they should be allowed to be wherever they want. 
and the rest, i.e. a big majority, said there should be businesses, but they should be in a certain area. Now, you said they should have this business wherever they want. I watched your hand. Yeah. Oh, well, I want to say something else first, but yeah, I mean... Next to a school. Well, Next to a church. <laughs> Next to your grandmother. The thing is, is it... <laughs> you get... Children get exposed to this on MTV more than they do with these clubs. They're walking by a building. You're basically walking by a building. But, um, but I first want to talk about the, the word degrading, because a lot of you people say this is degrading. I think that working as a waitress, making two fifty an hour, you know, working as hard as you can, 10 hours, 15 hours a day, making 50 to $60 in tips. I think that's degrading. And I think working as like an accountant, at, you know, you go through college and you get your MBA, you're working 80 hours a week during tax season. I think that's degrading. I think that if you are blessed with a body like these women and you would like to use it like people use their brains, and not saying, that, and I'll tell you that you have to use your brains to do something like this because it takes a lot of self-esteem in order to do stuff like this. And I think that you guys are not giving them the credit they deserve. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Yes, go ahead. For all the people that are standing up there, when you die, it's you, yourself, and you that goes before God. So when these people die, you can't say anything. God is going to once going to say it to them. Exactly. Right. Sally, yeah. I've been involved with Marshall Lynn's uh, effort to close down a lot of these clubs, and thanks in part to her. Councilman Walter McCaffrey recently introduced a bill that would get these clubs out of our residential neighborhoods. And do these girls and these people who own these places, do they ever have any respect for the neighborhoods that they put these places in? I don't think Absolutely. so. Absolutely. I don't think yeah, there, there's nothing to not respect. Actually, we don't have these clubs. We don't advertise outside to the kids that we have a strip club, come see girls take their clothes off. I mean, we're no, all closed off. You flyers. can't see. They give that flyers yeah, through the neighborhoods and to the colleges. The That's yeah. what they do. They give that flyers yeah, to the neighborhoods, to the colleges, are. to promoters. I don't look. I'm if not there wasn't a market, these the flyers, girls wouldn't though. be sitting up here. Thank you. Actually, take a break. We'll yeah, we right don't back. twist anybody's arm. <laughs> to me that uh, if you can earn a lot of money in our country, just about anything goes. Because all the people who say, well, this is a way of living, say, you know what, just do it for the money. So we got a real interesting country here. Anything goes if you do it for the money. See you next time.